How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Vampyrus Carmilla. This is issue number 11, and it's for November 2022. And as always, I'm really excited whenever this book comes out. It's been incredibly consistent quality, and the stories have always been really interesting. Uh, for those of you guys who are new to the magazine, Vampyrus Carmilla is black and white, classically styled anthology horror. So each issue is going to be six um, short horror stories, plus the, uh, the host segment where we get to see Carmilla herself. And they'll usually involve something like the classic monsters or some old-timey horror trope or setting, but there'll always be a little bit of a spin, a little bit of a twist, and these stories really do like to, you know, put in some new aspect to something old, and they're all really fun. Like I said, classically styled, so if you enjoy the old horror comics from like the 70s, uh, really, really good stuff. This time around, we do get three classic monster stories. So if you like your classic monsters, you're going to get them in here. And then we also get things like a rock and roll story inspired by the Rolling Stones. And even a swamp monster story in here. So yeah, pretty cool and lots of different things in here. So I definitely would once again recommend it. Um... I'm going to switch over to the close-up camera if you guys want to see a little bit more on each story and get to see some of the art. We're going to go to the close-up camera and you can see that, but no major spoilers. I'm, I'm not going to ruin the twist for anybody, so without further ado, to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Vampyrus Carmilla number 11. Bringing it closer to the camera, we can see that 11 is for November 2022, and the logo this time around is actually uh, transparent. It's not a solid color inside. We can actually see, like, the hair behind the uh, logo there. Uh, terrifying Tales of Enchantment and Horror, and we get this really fun uh, red cover with these two women here. Take a mind-bending journey to Primitive World. Now, with this cover, a lot of times when Carmilla, as well as the other magazines, uh, Shudder and The Creeps, a lot of times when they get a cover like this, they adapt it pretty directly. However, sometimes it is looser, and I will say this is one of the looser ones. We do get uh, this uh, woman here in the primitive world. Uh, there's not really this floating sorcerer lady behind her. There are other women in this story, and uh, they do have a sort of an interesting uh, relationship, but it's not just, uh, you know, a, a sorcerer. It's actually a, a really interesting idea, and we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But, um, yeah, the cover here down at the bottom, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. I think it's a San Julian. Oh, and she's actually standing on a little pile of skulls there. That's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, a really fun cover. I really love that vibrant red. Anyway, if we open this up, we get the back cover where we get Carmilla's Scary Tales, where she tells us about the origin of uh, usually a female monster. And today we're talking about Medusa. And it actually, I realized I didn't know as much about this character as I thought. Uh, Medusa is a, a Gorgon, you know, and a Gorgon is one that you, you know, can't look at their face. Uh, but she wasn't always, and I didn't realize she had such an interesting origin story. Uh, she was a priestess, and she was approached by Poseidon. However, she had to be a virgin to, to be a priestess, so she shot him down, and he forced himself on her, and then she got the uh, the curse to become a Gorgon, and it talks about her defeat and being used as a weapon, so a lot more to that story than I thought. After that, we get the uh, contents page, where you can see all the credits at the top, and we get uh, Carmela's Blood Letters, Wake the Mummy and Run, that's a, a fun pun there, Blood Relations, 
the pickup, drain the swamp, primitive world, that's the cover story, and Death Rock, a fun Rolling Stones uh, parody there. And we get a few of these preview images kind of hinting at what we might find in the eventual uh, stories. So anyway, after that, we get the letters page. We get Carmella with their letter here. And I have found no other comic book as dedicated to old school fun and horror like your short stories provide. And we get a bunch of the letters as well as a, a farewell to Neil Adams here. And after that, we jump into the stories proper. Now, when we get into these stories, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and show you guys the gist of the stories and the art, but I won't be doing major spoilers, and I'll be, you know, trying my best to avoid those twists, because there's usually a lot of fun, you know, unexpected plot elements that come in, so I'll be avoiding the twist. But anyway, one thing I do really like with Carmilla is we do get... Uh, the Carmilla in the Castle segments, and we get to, you know, check up and see what our host is doing with all the, uh, the monsters, and it turns out it's getting pretty late, and she hasn't done a story yet, and the monsters are demanding their story, but she wants a snack first, so she transforms into a black cat, and one of the monsters in the kitchen gives her some blood, and then after that she changes back and she's ready to tell her stories now. So, always fun to, to see her in the castle. And then after that, we get Take the Mummy and Run. So yeah, a, a classic monster story right off the bat. And we get these archaeologists, this uh, guy and his wife, and they're going in to this tomb. It's a, a relatively undisturbed, but uh, mostly empty tomb. And we get Carmilla there dressed up in her priestess outfit. Um, after that, we flip the page and they investigate. They find a guard uh, frozen in place behind them. There's a picture on the sarcophagus of a beautiful woman and they open it up and find that she is incredibly well preserved and they take her back to the university where the husband is spending all his time translating the slab to understand the mummy's story and he eventually does we go back in time we see the two guards there and there's what the woman was doing when she was alive talks about a secret affair with a powerful sorceress uh, but the guy in the story, he imagines as himself. So what's going to be the uh, the creepy story and how does this archaeologist fit into the, uh, the puzzle there? Overall, really classic Egyptian horror, um, even though the mummy this time around doesn't have the bandages on. Uh, after that, we get blood relations, and we get tiny little Carmilla up here in the corner, uh, but we get these kids going over to a crypt because they saw lights on yesterday, and there are mysterious disappearances in their town. They peer in behind the bars and see a vampire and his wife rise from their coffin, turn into bats, and attack this uh, guy. So, they're just kids, and they're the only ones that know their town has a couple of vampires. But what do you do? People don't trust kids, and, you know, or at least if a kid says a fantastic story, they're not really going to listen. However, their teacher told them about, about vampires, so they go to her, and she goes... I didn't mean that seriously, I was just showing you about history, history versus folklore, and she says something like, if you did see a real vampire, just stake it in the heart, or just cut off its head. So these kids decide, hey, let's go do that. And it's, you know, the classic children versus really, really hard monster, and children are always fun protagonists because, you know, they're instinctively just at a disadvantage, you know, 
uh, being younger, but this one does have a really fun twist behind it that I really did enjoy, something pretty unexpected. Um, after that, we get the pickup. Really do like that logo there. Um, and we get this guy, he's in New York, and he's kind of a New York stereotype, you know, he'll bump into people, he'll be kind of rude, and he bumps into this woman, and when he goes to help her with their stuff, realizes, oh man, this is an incredibly beautiful woman, so he instinctively flirts with her and tries to pick her up, and of course, bumps into some other completely unrelated guy as they uh, walk away, but things seem to be doing pretty well, but it's a case of, we know this is a horror story, we know this, some shoe is going to drop, we just don't know what, and we look for little clues throughout their date as to, you know, what might really be going on here. And we also do get a fun little uh, narrator in this story. Courtship has its rituals. Once the participants have expressed their mutual interest, so, you know, kind of narrating and, you know, almost like a, you know, this is what goes on in dating type story, you know? So that one's pretty interesting, uh, cool art as well, but I don't want to flip uh, too much farther. Uh, a, I don't want to spoil it, and B, there are a few panels that YouTube won't, won't like me showing you guys. Anyway, after that, we have Drain the Swamp. And in Drain the Swamp, we get these workers who find uh, a dead guy, and they say that they found a lot of them. Uh, they've been drained. They're trying to drain the swamp and getting drained themselves. And Legend of a Swamp Monster is circulating around their camp. And it appears that there's this one guy, their boss, who's this really tough guy who is trying to just get, you know, the project done. However, there's one guy left who refuses to move out of his swamp and says that the spirit of the swamp protects its residents and you can't make me move or the swamp spirit is going to get you. And on top of all that, uh, as he's going home, he happens to see the swamp guy's beautiful daughter bathing and, of course, falls instantly in love with her. But how exactly do you pick up this girl if you're literally trying to kick her out of her home? So, you know, classic anthology horror elements there. People in these stories always fall so madly in love. But what exactly is the the swamp creature you know no one's actually seen it it's rumors and myths and legend you know and so what exactly is uh protecting the swamp there overall it really cool and and they do point out that you know swamp creatures are a thing that everybody knows you know most famously like swamp thing but you know you don't really get too many swamp creature stories so that's always fun to see one anyway after that, we get the uh, the cover story, uh, Primitive World, but we do see this fun twist. Uh, so we get how the world is rougher and, you know, really uh, hard back then. And we get these two guys and one literally kills the other guy in order to get the woman. But we pull up and we see that... Uh, these are actually miniaturized clones living in a tiny little bubble world. And there are these two scientists looking down on them and studying them. So that's a really cool concept. You know, the whole world they inhabit is just a tiny little bubble world. And then over here we get uh, Vampiris Carmilla. And she's actually dressed up in a really fun parody of, uh, let me get it out here. Raquel, uh, Raquel Welch from Hammer's One Million Years B.C. I, I really, it's been a minute since I talked about a Hammer movie, and that's one of their classics that I actually haven't covered yet. Maybe I, I should talk about that sometime soon. But yeah, she's there in the One Million Years B.C. outfit, so I, I did find that a really fun gag. But anyway, we get to see the uh, the full version of the bubble there, and the scientists mention that uh, they got in a new tool that will allow them to project their minds 
into one of the miniaturized clones and see the world up close. And we get this main girl who, it turns out, you know, in the past, everybody was just killing each other and doing whatever they want. And in the present, everything is very uh, suppressed. And she wants to go and go back in time and actually be with a man. So she is stealing the helmet in the middle of the night and living out her fantasies in Primitive World. But of course, one night, while she's in there, someone is going to tamper with the helmet and, yeah, you know, this couldn't work out perfectly. It is a horror story after all. But overall, I really did like that concept. The idea that, you know, there's this whole world that all the people are just really tiny and on a table and just being looked down on by some scientist. A, a really just fun and crazy concept. And I, I think that one's one of my favorite stories from this. It's uh, really cool. And after that... Oh wow, are we almost at the end already? I think there's I think there's just one story left. Uh we get Death Rock up next and we find this uh lady is being strangled or drowned rather by a mysterious figure in her pool and we find that she used to be a member of this band here and they had just kicked her out and if we look at he one of the band members, Mike Hager and Keith Reynolds. We see that this band is actually kind of a parody of the Rolling Stones. And if you guys know your uh, Stones history, they did actually have one of their early band members who they uh, kicked out of the band and then shortly after leaving would be found dead in his pool under mysterious circumstances so they are really uh playing off of that there and they do have uh some other you know fun references uh later on in this uh story they actually rewrite uh it's only rock and roll which is a, a really great pull you know they they obviously play off sympathy for the devil later on but I really did like the pull of It's Only Rock and Roll, which I feel is kind of an underrated Stone song that I really do like. But anyway, uh, after the death, uh, this time around, the band members start to die of mysterious causes. You know, this one slips in the shower, and then later on, they find out that another one has died too, and they start to get replacement members as the original members are picked off one by one. But of course, what exactly is happening here? We know there's some mystery surrounding the original girl's death. Who is going after the, the new members of the band? So I really did like that one as well. I, I really do like the Stones. I, I have a lot of their stuff on vinyl. They're a really cool band. Um, definitely a Stones guy over a Beatles guy, you know, even though the Beatles did have lots of cool stuff as well. Uh, but anyway, that's all the stories from here. And overall, a, a pretty fun issue, you know, the primitive uh, world where they're all tiny, the Rolling Stones parody, and a bunch of classic monsters. Overall, another really good issue of Carmilla with some classic moments. And that's really one thing I do always stress with this magazine is this magazine, as well as Shudder, both of them are incredibly consistent. You always know that all the stories are going to be, at the bare minimum, pretty good, but you'll always get a few that really do stick in your head and you'll remember, oh yeah, remember that story where they were all really tiny and looked down on by scientists or, or something like that. So they're always really good, but you know, you always, you, you don't know what crazy story is going to come out of nowhere and it's just going to stick in your head for quite a while, you know? So as always, definitely do recommend this magazine. Now, if you want to see me talk about more about it, a playlist should pop up in a little bit, and this will be my Creeps slash Carmilla slash Shudder playlist, where you can see me talk about a bunch more of these magazines, so if you want to see more, there should be a playlist on the bottom in a second. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.